It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and day three in Santee. Things are really perking along now. We have brought in, well this morning Mel moved three yards of amended topsoil into this area and Daddy made two trips for boulders. One trip was for the larger ones that you see and then another trip for smaller rubbly sized. And Hannah, Kevin, and Omar have been installing all of these beautiful barrels from Brandon Bullard at Desert Theater. And I gotta show you this one, you guys. This is so funny. This is actually, yep, it's a barrel cactus. This was in this urn that was in by the front door in shade. Can you take your clippers and kind of reveal the face for them? Yeah. And it's just the funniest thing, this plant's desire to, to survive and to thrive despite its needs really not being met. So this is etiolation at its finest. Um, we all very intrigued to see how it grows out. Yes, because it's got, it's kind of buried right now because we had to bury it a little deep um, because it's so top heavy. But it's got this this type of a base at the bottom. Um, and then it just started growing taller and taller and taller in an attempt to reach the sun. And it's so interesting because you can see how long and thick and dense the needles are down at the bottom. And then as the plant has grown, the needles have become smaller and smaller. And I think that is to reveal more of the plant tissue so that it can absorb more light. Just genius move on the plant's part, but we're very interested and curious to see how this is gonna grow out. Um, if it's gonna to continue to be a columnar or if it's gonna get fat again, we don't know, but it's just fun. And we thought that it would be nice to bring it out here amongst its kin. So here are the bones of our barrel cactus garden. We have more barrel cactus that we can plant if we feel like we need them. If I don't want to put any more in here, I can put them in the garden proper. As we know, this is a huge garden and it really looks like a botanical paradise. It's so incredible. So this will all be zero escape. We will irrigate the um, crepe myrtle and any of the barrels at the base of the crepe myrtle will get water too, and that's fine. It's not that they don't need, that they don't like it, they just don't really need it. But giving your barrels a little water isn't gonna hurt them one bit. Especially if it drains, right? Yeah, especially if you've got really well draining soil and they're not sitting in. So here's the fountain, still on its palette, but our client picked this basalt fountain out herself, really spoke to her. It is just a beautiful piece of obsidian. Um, this is a rock that's been, been bored it's called rim rock and the water will just splash out over all these crevices and nooks and crannies. It's going to be stunning. We've still got, you know, a, a decent amount of barrel cactus. We've still got, this is some of the things like the totem and this bacarnia. These are um, designated for pots. Um, but we've still got some portalacaria to stage and some brevifolia and a couple of aloes there. I'm going to be going with Hannah tomorrow to Oasis to get some fun stuff. So, you know, here we have uh, the bones of our garden and the guys have pretty much got everything installed and they've all been, all the plants have been ringed with irrigation, the ones that are getting irrigated. We took advantage of the shade over here underneath the crepe myrtle to plant a stand of aeoniums. Uh, we got a portalacaria over there that hasn't been staged yet. And this little area here, this, this is their entry and it's tragic right now. I mean, we have two little plants. So it'll look very different tomorrow. We're gonna add more rubble and we're gonna add more uh, plant material. This is extremely exposed right here and hot. So I can't do anything cutesy. It has to be tough plants, uh, but that's okay. We will find some really, really beautiful things to sprinkle throughout this yard. We're gonna be bringing in even more boulders, smaller ones to sprinkle around throughout the garden. Um, it of course will be top dressed with chamois beige and then I will throw burgundy Three, three quarters around as well for that third, th third level, uh, third dimension. This Euphorbia millii 
was in a tiny little pot. And I took it out of the tiny little pot and staged it in this new pot that I got from Waterwise Botanicals. And I think this guy is gonna leaf out and be as happy as a clam um, now that it's in its new home. This area, as you know, is all gonna be flagstone pathway. Greg is gonna pick up the flagstone tomorrow. I did all of my mammillarias here. This Restrata is so stunning. I didn't want to compete with it. So I kept everything around it very low pro. Um, our Big Bertha or our cactus over here. You should ask the people. Yeah, what is this? Or Trichoceros. Trico, Tricholobivia, Trichoceros, Echinopsis. What is this thing? Um, I feel like it's just a miniature version of the Big Bertha over there that's getting ready to throw off hot pink flowers. But anywho, moving on. So here we have the area that gets um, shaded in the afternoon. And I did plant one stand of Aeonium Sunburst here. Um, these are gonna be sprinkled out um, throughout this area. Greg has been working over here on irrigation and on um, putting in the uh, pond basin. So it's, I've not been able to get over here and do any planting, but the pathway will run through here, around this side of the, uh, the fountain and finish up over here at the patio. This area in through here will all be succulent tapestry. It's very cool and shady in the afternoon over here. So I feel like this is the spot for that. Um, it's going to be such a nice transition too, because over here with this Draco, we have these beautiful fish hook barrel cactus and it's just, it's very, very dry and desert. And then on the other side in the shade, it's going to be really luscious and tropical. So really taking advantage of the microclimates in your yard is something that I highly encourage you to do. So tomorrow. Um, will be day four of a six day. Tomorrow we will continue planting. We will continue irrigating. We're gonna bring in a bunch of pre-emergent and sprinkle that all over uh, as well to help keep the weeds at bay. Um, this area, you know, I need to get plants and get things going in all around in here. Where the guys are moving the soil right now and burying the valves, or the, the valves, I want to keep very low profile because I don't want to block, right, I don't want to block her view of the fountain from the kitchen window. And also they've got a really pretty concrete bench that we're going to stage right in here. So it'll be shaded and protected and they can take advantage of the beautiful view and the bubbling fountain and all of the, all the things. Obviously still need to get some stuff in over here too. So it's looking a little dry. So we're going to pop in um, some more pretty beautiful, you know, some colorful aloes, maybe some cotyledon, maybe, you know, I don't know, whatever they have at Oasis that I really like, maybe even some mammillaria or some smaller cactus. Uh, they're colorful and bright. Um, we need to bring in a few more boulders in here, but we're making a super duper amount of progress. You have just about four days left to register for Succulent Tapestry 101 2.0 with me on Saturday, April 20th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, where I will teach you everything I know about succulent tapestries. I'll install one for you in real time and answer every question that you have. So get over to my website at lauraubanks.com and register if you haven't yet. And I really am excited to see you all there and be able to engage with you in person. So this has been Laura Eubanks reporting from Santee, California with Team DFS and day three and your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.